How are you? I'm tired. How are you? <laughs> Same. <laughs> oh, I don't know how, how much time uh, I, I will re recount weeks uh, before the end of the class. Maybe, maybe this is not yet the last lab. Maybe we will have one or two more to accomplish the projects. But the original idea that 55% of, of the projects will be done today. Uh, are we doing lab on that week or not? Because I can just tell you right now how many labs there are. On the dead week, uh, the... It's the 11th. Uh, all results should be in place. Uh, we will do like auxiliary lab just to prepare videos for presentations. Okay, and then that's it. Okay. So... Okay. Uh, more after this one. But still, let's like pretend that we do not have anything else and try to speed up now because after Thanksgiving, mm. people do not do things, right? I do. Due to general sponsor, we have some snacks. <laughs> and <laughs> by looking around, you can find the sponsor. Um, so, you all do have an idea what to do, I, I will show it on the, on the screen, and um, I believe most of you got uh, some input from helpers, right? So, um, I will do something primarily related to Morgan's project. So the whole class will do his project, so to say. Not, not completely, maybe f first steps. But it is an Im important part o o of the class. It will take about first hour, and then I will just stop by uh, individually. So um, you have got a couple of codes in, uh, in the email, and you can either do your project if you want to like get through qu quicker the um, last time i think i was distributing this little uh, uh, guides of, of steps and they uh, let me know if, if you need them electronically another option is just to follow uh, run these four codes they are basically the same only one parameter is changed there run for codes and observe what happens and uh, I will be providing instructions and, and explaining wh what it is. And the third way, just sit and relax. <laughs> <laughs> so um, b b before I will start pr uh, project materials, I'll give a little forward for those who are listening, if, if you want to. It's, it's not critically necessary. Maybe your, your own project is more important. This material and the first steps of, of Morgan's project will be covered maybe in the very last lecture of the class. Uh, so we are going a little ahead. If you do remember motivation slides for, for today today's uh, class, there was an uh, important concept that there was a system that simultaneously experiences properties of uh, nuclear and vibrational degrees of freedom, uh, vibrational and rotational degrees of freedom. Same synergy of different degrees of freedom uh, is um, standard thing because the everything is multifold and one of the most 
interesting, beneficial, useful and practical uh, synergy is between electronic and nuclear degrees of freedom. A little bit different from what was in the class. If uh, you need examples, uh, any organic dye which has grounded and excited electronic states, in each of these electronic states there are different internuclear potentials. Right? So it's a it's, uh, syn synergistic operation of both electronic and nuclear degrees of freedom. Therefore, one needs at least two or maybe more potential energy surfaces and at least two or more electronic states. And there is a probability of uh, transition between these electronic states and uh, potential surfaces by different mechanisms. Can you do it? Yes, but it is. It will be an intellectual challenge. Um, it is not goal of the class to uh, that all of us become professional programmers, scientific programmers. We just need to get basic ideas, and and these little codes are auxiliary. But uh, before we were always propagating only one nuclear degree of freedom, and we didn't have electronic degrees of freedom. One of lucky us, uh, Stephen, has a project with two electronic degrees of freedom for NMR doublet, which can be up and down. But uh, it will be either his uh, own secret project or it will be exposed to the whole class maybe at the last uh, lab if, if time allows. But uh, what we are going to do today is um, outstanding in, in its beauty and complexity. We need to merge together electronic and nuclear degree of freedom. Okay, I think enough for four words. And Here is a little reminder of, uh, of your choices, just if you didn't do your own records and uh, if you see something differs or s someone is missing, it means that it was last minute arrangement and you know about it. So let's be very practical and Probably it will be more reasonable if you just watch it working and, and then uh, go over principles and, and, and details, otherwise it will be too boring. Did, did anyone try to, to run it? Yes, the the one uh, I will explain what's what's the difference. But the very recent, like in a few minutes uh, before our So um, there are two potential energy surfaces and this uh, dash line, blue dash in the blue potential, uh, originally looks very similar to uh, what we had a couple of labs before. 
so it sits in the center and doesn't sh uh, change uh, its shape and position minus some very little weakness but with time its uh, height and area out under this probability distribution gets smaller and smaller but because of conservation of probability something appears uh, with this red color in the red parabola right what is novel different and uh, challenging in here I will go over other other slides uh, other panels as well before we never practiced an analogy of schizophrenia it was always normal for uh, function for one position in space there was one point in the probability distribution for wave function squared now for each position in space we have two wave functions how to interpret it what do you think Now we, sh we, we discuss it openly and collectively, and on the final presentation, Morgan will teach us what it is. Um, there are two wave functions defined, like for, for each value of position, there are two values of wave function. It's same like um, plotting two orbitals overlapping with one atomistic model. And it, it is not set of eigenstates. It's uh, actual what, what is going on with the system. So the blue line is the part of wave functions that residing in the blue parabola. The red one is the one that's residing in the in the red parabola. And they have a it's like a waves in two cups, and they have a leak. They can penetrate from one cup to another, but both of them are good quantum harmonic potentials, oscillators. Right? So, um, for Morgan and his uh, project, the goal will be just to assess uh, where the, uh, which practical situation is modeled by these parabolas. How the initial conditions modify the <coughs> outcome what is observed and we will uh, we all will practice it a little bit before we go to this practical detail uh, I suggest we discuss a little bit what it is what we already started and then I will exhaust you with showing details how it is programmed just in case if uh, we need to change something we need to see the uh, details and I will give you heads up when I will start this stuff and then you can just win back and relax or do you whatever your own projects are yes it should if you don't I, I can uh, borrow your laptop which I don't you can take this one if you want okay so Do you have any any mm, protest or any questions about this paradigm of two waves and two different cups that look between each other? Which one should we run? You should run. Uh, <laughs> like one minus in the you should run all, all and all this this is very little exercise for the project. You will need to generate like twenty of similar and run twenty or hundred. It's nothing. You, you're not doing it with Abacus. Computer does it for you, right? Um, so I will run others maybe as well or uh, explain what they are. And you may try and check what they are. But before, let's go through conceptual things. 
we share any protest or irritation or misunderstanding with this figure? If you have some comments, or you you can support like, oh yes, I was always thinking we function the, uh, but some um, does it look natural or unnatural? Huh? So, wh wh what is what is most uh, un unnatural? Well, um, if we add together this, uh, these two lines, it will be overall distribution, and uh, it will sum uh, curve of the summation uh, being integrated gives one. So summation of these two is normalized. If we seal the leak, then each of them will be uh, ideal harmonic oscillator. It will oscillate either in one or another. And uh, you will see that there is a uh, same, it's the same code, it's derivative of the same code. There will be parameters for Gaussian wave function like uh, position and momentum. Right now it is set up to sit in the, in the, uh, at the equilibrium position and uh, therefore it doesn't move, right? natural. The other one is uh, has a equilibrium position away, therefore it distributes and, uh, and does some motion. Hmm. Let me draw something. So um, this is not the whole story, it is oversimplified. Suppose we have diatomic molecule. And uh, in ground state, it has uh, one average interatomic distance. If we excite it with light in the excited state, electronically, if we promote electron to next orbital, the equilibrium distance may change and potential energy surface may change, right? So if you have a mechanism of jumping between electronic states, then the molecule will experience different interatomic forces, which means that for each uh, of these electronic states, we will have, let's make this one shorter. For each of the electronic states, parabolas, uh, and we use parabolas just to make our life simpler. It, it, it typically, it's more something more complicated. Do have at least different equilibrium position. In addition to that, they may have different offsetting energies. So this is uh, electronic offset. And if you know for sure that the system is in the electronic state number one, then it will be wave packet only here. 
if we know that for sure electronic state is uh, in another potential, it will be wave packet somewhere there. Right? But what if it is halfway here, halfway there? So um, psi two, psi one. But how do we mathematically record data if we want to describe the situation? So we, we are not yet approaching the way of uh, solving it. We're just um, figuring out the basis. One way, and uh, I'll tell you right away, uh, do not listen to it, it will be wrong. One way would be to say that uh, wave function is product of psi 1 of x1 and uh, psi 2 of x2. And then it will be like product of them. Because these two dimensions are kind of different. No time for arguing it. Uh, it was only hypothetical to, to show possibilities. They are of the same uh, nature, and remember when we were doing two and three dimensional boxes, we were doing multiplication of uh, wave functions, but we were multiplying wave functions to dramatically different degrees of freedom, like x and y. Here it is still the x. What is our second degree of freedom? I suggest we, we, we do it in form of d uh, informal discussion because it's all the things can be derived rigorously, but then uh, it, it will take three semesters. <laughs> and I, I, I believe in your scientific intuition. So what is changing when we get from one state to another state? Energy, and we started talking about uh, synergy of different degrees of freedom. One degree of freedom is uh, nuclear motion. What is another degree of, degree of freedom? If you are thinking whether to sleep or to wake up, right now is a good time to wake up and think actively. It, it, there will be an important, important conception and it will be like throwing minds off. There is another degree of freedom. What is the second degree of freedom? What is changing if you go from one to another parabola? Yeah, Perf absolutely perfect. You are ready for this problem. And um, <laughs> like we are going from Luma to Luma plus one. We are jumping between orbitals. So count of orbitals, count of electronic state is our different degree of freedom. Why it is uh, throwing minds off? Why it is non, not usual when it's a new concept? Because we got used to think of um, degree of freedom of something continuous. A little bit of effort was in transferring operators from continuous to discrete matrices. But still we were considering that sometimes we can go into, into continuous. But here it is dramatically discrete. So uh, degree of freedom number one is x. Degree of freedom number two is electronic state. or we can say it is number of electronic state. So it will be just either one or two, or we can uh, count them zero or one. And I was reserving the next words for much later lecture material, but I will disclose the secret now. This was the reason why we adopted Dirac notation, to be able to play with degrees of freedom which are discrete. So
So here x can be equal like 0, 0 0.01, 0 0.02, continuously, right? Take all values. Here for these discrete electronic states, it can, in our approach, it can have only two values, one or two. And uh, if you want to um, call them, you can say electronic wave function is equal one or electronic function equals two, where one and two are electronic states. One more step. What if the system is in between, in uh, like halfway excited? If uh, we have part of the probability is that is, it is, I think Morgan was telling about Schrodinger cat in the first uh, uh, axioms. So what if uh, one and two is life and death of Schrodinger cat? And it is halfway with probability one half alive with probability half dead. How do we write a wave function for it? I know the answer, but if you can, uh, we can add them together. So psi electronic equals one plus two, and we do have co expansion coefficients c sub one, c sub two. Make sense? And now these expansion coefficients c1 absolute value squared plus c2 absolute value squared should be equal 1 if it is a good normalized wave function. Good? Uh, feel f free to protest or to stop me. So if um, what good does it know or what good does it do knowing when they're in between how to represent that? Kind of a complicated question, but when, once again, what? Um, how does it help us to know how to represent when it's in between the states? Okay. Suppose you are inducing transitions between the the states by quantum of light, right? S one way of thinking about it is that infinitesimal short, infinitesimal small particle of light hits system and immediately converts it from one state to another. But another, there is, so it is very quantum discrete way. But if we come back to a classical picture, Light is oscillations of electromagnetic field. And if our quantum has uh, amplitude of these oscillations, very small. So it's just being system being excited by uh, appropriate frequency, but small amplitude. Then this transition from ground to excited or whatever, excited one, excited two, will be not instantaneous, but it will be continuous. Result in measurement in the, the Schrodinger cut will be always either one or two. But quantum state can be in between 50-50. And we need a language to describe it. Make sense? Good. If you were not protesting and if you were supporting this idea, you are done with physical chemistry and quantum theory. Absolutely. There will be no new ideas anymore. <coughs> Th this was maybe main part of the c main idea of the course. Uh, I'll keep entertaining you and, and offering you something to do, but you are you are already over the top of the mountain. Now, from now on, we are going downhill. We need to merge degree of freedom number one x and degree of freedom number two, which is the discrete one. You see it? Uh, with your permission, I, I'm going to erase, okay? There is no promise that recording will be sufficient, but so successful, but about 90% of times it, it is good. It's watchable. So, 
I will erase this stuff and r r uh, combine something out of here. So when we have a synergy between different degrees of freedom, we need to multiply them. Okay? So our big wave function, which will be depending on electronic and nuclear degrees of freedom, will be product of the smaller wave function, which depends on x for nuclear times C1 1 plus C2 2 for this one for nuclear, this one for electronic degrees of freedom. Good? Do not hesitate to stop and protest. Uh, lack of protest means you completely support and agree with it. So we are coming closer. Right? We are not yet there, but we will be there very soon. Right now, it looks like the wave function is the same for both electronic states. But the most adequate way would be instead of factorizing nuclear function outside it will be correct to think that expansion coefficients in front of the states one and two are wave functions in a nuclear sense which means these two degrees of freedom are not just multiplied they are entangled and if you use the word entangled I will tell you um, even if, if you want you may uh, talk directly to whomever you are helping I'm just entertaining everyone it's it, it shouldn't uh, deviate uh, the projects so if you use the word entangled in any of your scientific uh, activity products it will multiply attention to your work times 10 so instead of this notation we should write that this uh, big wave function is psi nuclear of x 1 times electronic state 1 plus nuclear wave function 2 for electronic state 2 so if of x if we accept the concepts behind this notation then uh, there is there will be nothing new in the rest of the course it will be just just continuation and the uh, dynamics that you see here is implementation of this concept so this uh, blue and red are states one and two and in each of the states there are wave functions nuclear wave functions but they're not independent they are connected if we require uh, this big wave function to be normalized and we know that uh, Brian Kett of, of this and Brian Kett of this will, will give one it gives the requirement that say nuclear one say nuclear one of x So, uh, absolute value square of first, absolute value square of second, integrated over all uh, space, should give normalization one. Therefore, it is like two cups with a wick between them, or two containers with liquid 
passing through okay any suggestions or questions why do we need it and what is the what is outcome what is criterion of success in this little problem what is the main observable what we should we look at huh yeah. yes uh, wave functions are beautiful I love them <laughs> <laughs> Especially orbitals in atomistic calculations, but they contain too much information. Wave functions typically do not uh, exit from interferometer or any uh, instrument. So we ne we need even if we do um, just a little thoughtful experiment uh, without instrument in our thoughts, we need to identify something simpler than just wave function. Suppose we have two, and we do, uh, there will be absolutely no time to go over all details, but suppose we do have two to propagate this complicated wave function in time, which means we will put variable t here and there, here, 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 and there. Will it affect normalization? No. If you are answering no, it means you are doing perfect in the class, and if uh, one would make an exam with multiple choice, you, you will pass for sure. I, your science that you answered no is very good. It's healing to my heart. But the relative proportion, if you do this integral over x, and integral over over x there. Do not need to be constant. So we can call it probability that the system stays in state one as function of t. Probability that system stays in state two as function of t. Their summation will be always one. But the relative proportion is like 1% plus 99%, or 50 and 50, or 20 and 80. OK? Very good. Thank you for the support. So sup uh, and we, we will go very soon through the, through the code where these uh, proportions are introduced. If yeah. Here, here they are. If you feel free to, to, to chat, it's more important. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going, it's fine. Well, just to clarify, so essentially by adding time dependence, or the time factor to our normalized equation, we're just going to solve for the probability of finding an electron in two different states. Mm -hmm. oh. Yep. So if you didn't add that time, it's one. It will be super boring. Okay. So, uh, when you were running the code, did you saw this uh, image? So please try to run. Uh, doesn't matter. I did run. Uh, let, let me check which one I, I, I did. The, the plus one gives you that, and then some of the other ones just gives you like something across the top. Yeah, I did. I did one plus. Yes. But you n notice this, it is not labeled, but uh, we can do it easily. So this uh, stuff shows how the probability changes from, uh, so it's probability in state one, probability in state two. They both are within, uh, between zero and one. Their summation will be always one. 
but it is an information at which quantum state uh, our system is. Okay? So basically it is this P1, P2. Question to Alisa. Oh, okay. So, uh, we would be a good candidate just to draw this uh, probability as function of time as a main result. Yes, it, it, it oscillates, but it is still too much information, T too many data points to follow all this trajectory. Look, here it is mostly as a straight line. What do we do with straight lines? I know, typically we do not do anything with uh, stuff in class, we forget about it and <laughs> go to relax and uh, I don't know. Each one has different uh, hobbies, but if you need to describe a straight line, what do you do with it? Huh? Just like find the slope? Yes! Did you hear it? It's, it's, uh, you're, you're a perfect accomplished scientist. So, if a scientist does see a straight line, he, he or she finds a slope. So if, if you identify that this probability changes linearly, you can just find the slope. What will be the slope of this P1 of T? Not, I'm not uh, answer, asking for the answer. I'm asking what is the slope uh, in the, like... Negative. Huh? Negative. Uh, correct, but it is a practical answer. More, more abstract. If you have function, how do we extract slope from it? Huh? Yes, you are confirming your reputation. <laughs> so if you do dp1 over dt, it will give the slope. The slope is just one number. So we reduce very complicated problem to just one number. And the main result of each run will be the slope. So if we forget about uh, like details, modeling of uh, realistic systems, and just think practically, if I am get paid to solve this problem for hire, what is my final product? I run it with different conditions, and I record slope. Just one, one run, one number. And then I can put correlations. Which parameter did I choose? Did I change? Like, um, let me bring it bring it I can change initial uh, equilibrium position I can change uh, energy offset I can change initial momentum and then for I will run it again and again several times and for each value of parameter I will record the slope and uh, let me assure you that there will be strong scientific value in this. It, I it is already uh, with models at this uh, level of complexity. With this paradigm, it is a competitive research. You do not need more. You just need to explain how these parameters are related to a realistic uh, problem. We do not have time to explain the parameters. It will, uh, we will learn it from Morgan when it will be his time to present. But we do have time to play a little bit with these codes, with the, this specific code. So let me form, uh, I do not want to erase it because it's uh, really uh, important. I'm going to set up a little educational task that uh, I invite everyone to, to do it. And it will be mimicking the research project of Morgan. So um, 
his actual work will be a little bit different, but very close. So I suggest to take as a parameter the energy offset between these two parabolas. Basically, in these four uh, versions of codes, there is only one variable that tells are they uh, higher or lower than each other. And as a main outcome, we will find the slope. And uh, here you put energy of set to warm up your interest I will say that uh, Dr. Rudy Marcus got Nobel Prize for solving this problem uh, without computer for, s for a couple of specific examples so it's on the on the top edge of chemical research so energy offset and here the um, uh, version of code version of code is a little bit silly because um, I did a silly thing I changed one parameter and renamed the code one can just it's like line number nine um, like D E of something like this so we have uh, one minus zero one plus and two plus so let's write down here what are the values of energy offset and find and run the code four times, or four versions of the code, and write uh, what are the um, values of the rate. And then ju just discuss it. I suggest to go this way because uh, time is limited and um, if we go rigorously through all steps, it will be a killer. And if you do this little exercise, it will uh, bring inspiration and understanding of concepts quicker than anything else. I intend to finish this stuff in about 10 minutes and then I will be visiting one to one. Okay, so um, let's do a slope of, of this line. It, it gets to 0 0.5 within uh, 5,000 steps, right? So it's like 5 divided by 5,000, it will be 1 over 1,000. Which version was it? 1 plus. One plus. One and and what, what is the value of offset uh, oh here, DE of line number 7? 1 plus the uh, value is uh, 0 0.0074 we, we are here in uh, atomic units and the slope is 1 over 10,000 ok now there, there is either downloading another version of code or I will just uh, replace number one by number two and just to avoid con uh, confusion with previous notation code two plus now I'm going to erase if it would be my project I would do screenshots and put them in PowerPoint or later when repeating, but now just to avoid uh, excessive uh, windows, I will uh, close all of them. Ok, 
is and I'm running two plus. So what, what, do, what do you see as an uh, observation? The blue is twice higher than before. It will be an intrigue until it runs into the end, but uh, do you think it um, transfers from blue to red quicker or slower? Just by observing. Slower. Basically, the energy offset, if there is no energy offset, it is resonance and it is expected to transfer quicker. We increase energy offset and it is uh, slower. This blue stuff o almost stays where we prepared it and the red one performs some, some motion. Okay. Let's find the our favorite uh, figure. Okay, this, as, as we discussed, it is slower, right? Noticeably slower. Right? And uh, maybe it is not always the straight line, but we can approximate, think of it as, as a straight line. And uh, what we can do to um, erase these uh, upper lines so they do not affect us, and then look, so it is only the one that starts from zero. So what um, we can restrict our interest only to the initial fragment of line because otherwise uh, later on it starts mass so we can probably go up to the like 2000 so it's uh, it reaches three and a half percent by uh, 2000 or maybe approximately four percent by by 2000 if you click on that point with Um, there, um, there are several, uh, like, I need to maybe disable this, yes. I am not strong in math. Can you help me dividing these two numbers? <laughs> huh? So, like, uh, approximately... Four, four by hundred divided by uh, by two thousand, right? Yeah, four zeros and then one. Okay, four zeros, one. No, it cannot be one because there is four and two. Oh. Uh huh. So what do you, what do you get? We can do it on on MATLAB. So two, four zeros and two. Okay. And here it was. Four zeros and one? Four zeros and one. Mm. No? Isn't it one over three? Yeah, wasn't it like five? Over yeah, yeah, three, three, three zeros and one. Okay. So it, it's about five times. So we got it about uh, five times slow, uh, slower, right? Please, uh, you want to correct it or? Um, shouldn't it be for the one plus? Should it still be four zeros? Because it was point five over five thousand. So point five divided by five thousand. Three zeros and the one. It's one times ten. Um, 
1 times 10 to minus 4 and here is 2 times 10 minus 5. Yeah. Okay? Because one over, 1 over 10,000 is that Okay, so uh, here we get 5 times slower, right? And uh, the value here was this much multiplied by 2. So 0, 1, 4, 8. Okay? Now let's uh, check what will happen if you have 0. Will it. Uh yes. It's um, for educational purposes. I suggest we do it manually. Okay. Uh, when you will come into production queue, of course you you will not do it measuring slope on the uh, on the screen. So I just replace two with zero and uh, save as zero. Save. I'm going to uh, close all windows, even if they have beautiful figures, just uh, for... to avoid confusion. So you see, now they are in resonance. Hypothetically, from our in intuition, it should be the quickest. But we do not know before we try. Maybe it will be the quickest in, in this time, but uh, it's not always this way. Now you see it um, drops in the blue potential and grows in the red potential. So the shape of wave functions display minimal oscillations. It's just multiplying by a factor. In, uh, in, this uh, in this equation it will be just Gaussian here, Gaussian there, without much uh, change, just multiplying by a constant. And, uh, okay, it looks like about the same as here, or, or maybe a little bit quicker. Let's uh, find the, the slope. Uh, 0.6 divided by 5,000. One point two. So it will be one point two ten uh, minus four. So it, it, it looks like a little bit quicker, right? And now we need to try the negative. This is the image that uh, uh, we can show if there is no time to show movie, right? It starts in, in one and then appears in another one. And um, this one is the rate 
uh, as a derivative of uh, the product uh, over probability over time. So it oscillates, but there is a mean line. Like uh, I think here is 1.3 to 10 minus 4 is what we did man manually. So this average line. Okay, erasing it. Now putting minus 1. Save as. Now our uh, product is lower than uh, re re reactant. Right. What do you expect? Quicker or slower? You're right. You're ready for your project. You have an intuitive vision of how it works. So uh, there are two factors. One, that it is again off resonance. And uh, there is... Um, upwards in energy, which is uh, always not a good idea, right? So it's like endothermic in instead of exothermic. So we may hope that something, some little one appears in the red, but it is uh, so much slower that it is hard to see by human eye. So here the uh, result is not obeying our linear slope because if we do it at the very few steps, it may show like much quicker. But if you select, if you approximate uh, first steps as, as a line, but if you take any point there, it will be slower and slower and slower. So uh, one can probably put the error bar or in addition, not in addition, in, uh, we may come to an idea that the strategic planning of research had one flow. The rate is not the whole story. There should be at least two characteristics. In addition to the rate, if it grow, grows linearly, it can go to, um, like here it, go, it grows, grows infinitely, but it may come to a saturation, to the uh, value of probability at time equals uh, infinity. And you can call it uh, yield of reaction. And probably one needs to record both rate, which in uh, here will be bigger than anything else. It will be, I, I, mean, I have fear to, to record it. <laughs> but in addition, one, one probably needs to add another column, and in addition to slope rate, to set up yield which will be value of uh, r um, product probability at time equals infinity. Any questions about this thing? Um, to have most of the project unified, uh, the suggestion for Morgan is to use uh, plus one only, but to modify initial momentum. And uh, 
I would be very happy to go over the code, how it works, but uh, then we will suffer for other projects. Maybe I'll, uh, I'll share the r records from last year or mm, do a little bit on the methods, how it works when we meet next time after Thanksgiving. Okay, uh, I'll go over the very minimal parts of the codes without uh, details only to be able to uh, operate. So, um, Morgan, you need to talk to uh, your graduate student helper to get idea of what parameters are, like curvature. The mass here is a uh, couple of thousand times bigger than mass of uh, electron, and you may find out what it is, wh why it is this way. But if you go through, you will see that there is a p naught uh, variable and p squared over 2m is kinetic energy and kinetic energy is the same as temperature in some sense so one can uh, set up larger value of p naught and see how it will change the uh, overall overall run do you have any um, expectations from what what it uh, what is being changed if one adds momentum to nuclear wave function Will it be quicker or slower? Uh, it's my expectations as well. So you see it uh, initial momentum immediately promotes it up, right? And then uh, it doesn't matter uh, for this wave packet where we are. So it uh, has higher energy and it vividly um, helps tunneling, not tunneling, just promoting probability from uh, blue to the red, right? So with naked eye, we see that heating will solve all problems. And um, the idea, practical idea, if you do not get into um, deep theories, is to make a table like this, where argument will be momentum or temperature. And this is common motif for uh, everyone, ex well, for about half of the of the class, except uh, Stephen and partial. Well, and Emily and 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 John, you play with momentum. And I think it is enough about Morgan's project. Let me just quickly show another in interesting thing so that um, here it grows, but it grows not um, constantly with constant slope, but with steps, right? Not continuously, but with steps. So uh, it corresponds to wave packet passing through special points on this profile. Okay. Any questions about this thing? I would really love to go over it. Just it, it will be it will kill the rest of the, <coughs> the the course because of lack of time. So um, let me bring up the list. And uh, 
Let's just chat one to one. Morgan, you happy? Explanation of parameters. You can you can start running, changing momentum, and recording rates and yields immediately. So, in some sense, Morgan got preferences. You can you with guarantee can complete your project today in the remaining hour. Create a table, put manual slopes, but then learn what uh, how they correspond to what is shown in the in the code, and uh, you may record uh, these equations because it is what you explain to when you are presenting your your thing. Oh. Which code? Neither one. I need to send you sp a special okay. special code. Okay. Maybe I, I will do it as, as a first priority right now. I will just pull it out and, and send to you. That would be wonderful. Okay.
About forty pounds. More than ten. Uh, I only got thirty one. Uh, <laughs> you know my bad habit of renaming code after changing one, one variable. Okay. So just try running them one by one, see what observations and I, I will make a circle come back to you and see what what happens. So I ran this one with just the normal parameters. Mm -hmm. So do you want me okay, so you said to use like the the plus one to do these, right? But then change just the different parameters? P not change just P okay. Yes and uh, do it in Excel table because uh, you may want to change it like from zero to hundred. Okay. And, and you do not need to like uh, do it like one, zero, one, two, three. You can do uh, like zero, one, four, sixteen, twenty-five, uh, and then see if you can do a rough scanning. And then if you uh, see the trend, it will be enough. If not, then do with more finer grid. Okay, so I should just um, change the peanut values and record it. Record the slope. Mm -hmm. each other. Yeah. And try to open Excel and record it r r right there. Oh, right. Um. saying to look at uh, line 32, line 60, and line 66 as being the points of interest. Okay, let's just open the uh, Let's see if I can make this window bigger. Uh -huh. Can you do it a, a little smaller so that I can go into command line? Okay. About, yeah, about, uh, good, enough. Okay, come here. Number of ensemble. Um, there will be ensemble number of ensemble. Where is the end of this cycle? Then there, there is another over time steps. So it looks like we are putting uh, variables overall first, fourth, second, and third. Sorry. 
Did you, did you run it? Yes. Right. Okay, okay. I need a few seconds more to... Teach me how to get to the code. Oh, um, and uh, click on editor. Okay, thank you. ASX. Okay. I was running another no, no, not, then not clear or variables, and now. element of ensemble it's why it changes uh, energy basically what, what we were doing there right? mm -hmm. here we were changing it drastically here it, it changes just by very, very little offset and the offset of uh, okay offset of energy This is one that you recognize, right? Mm -hmm. And this one is... No, we need... Not this one, but there should be... Um, the way to rotate this thing. Maybe it's still running. Oh, it's probably still running. Okay. Okay. Is it supposed to do that? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, therefore, it was stopped there.
Because I've had this computer for a while, I can tell you from the sound of the fan and the way the mouse is moving, we're using all of the computing power. Yep. Well, if uh, it's not sufficient uh, power, just run it on. Just It's not that uh, excuse me, optimal way. way. You, you better spend time on discussing rather than watching how it goes. Let's just stop it. And it, it will uh, answer the question that you were posing to me. Let's bring more chairs and food. And comfort <laughs> Neither when it is either in ground and except it will be north or south pole. When it moves like according to free in induction decay, we just free with motion, it uh, moves here. So we need three numbers as x, as y, as z. As each of them is function of time. Good. Mm -hmm. So you do have the row statistically averaged so it's like start row and then uh, one Instead of st uh, writing stat, I just put bar on top. One, two, row two, one, bar, bar, t, t. So as soon as you know this uh, four numbers, so-called elements of density matrix, and just uh, there is no time to go over all the rigorous things, but we, we had it in class, right? And I, I remember but right now this is of so much yeah. higher priority. So suppose we know this. And based on these four numbers we can get these three numbers. Meaning that these three numbers looks like you already went through uh, like Wikipedia or other sources and you, you, you got what this. Yes, it has the... These would be the four numbers you're talking about? Mm. The row? No. No? This but is a super. I I like dealing with you. It's four numbers here. Just um, instead of one and two, 
one can use zero and one okay. only two numbers. So uh, if one the meaning of this row one, one row two two one, one, one two row to one um, this is occupation of state one this is occupation of state two and uh, those two are coherences coherences between one and two coherences between two and one the meaning of this uh, row ij is just uh, psi i psi j so if you know why functions in the discrete basis as we, we discussed there so it's all, all connected to, to the thing. Then you have this row. Yeah, so S, uh, yeah, okay. What is SZ according to your reading? Do not read right now. Tell, tell me what you think or what you remember. How it is called. So it's very right. Uh, the formula you've been using is too high. On the board. Yes. It is related but not uh, directly. So, um, Row sub z, and in, if, if you want to make correspondence to your Wikipedia article, and this is w, and its name is inversion, inversion of population. So it changes from minus one half to plus one half. This is so if uh, we take row 2, 2, minus row 1, 1, wait, wait, two. so if ever all population is in uh, state 2, it will be 1 minus 0 divided by 2, then it will be 1 half. So basically, um, our goal is to find the, the, the ideal condition. If uh, this one is 0 and this one is 1, What's the result? Minus so one half. Which kind of parameter can I, can I modify? Row to two equals zero. Row one, one equals one. So it is changes from minus one half to plus one half, and it's like if everything is in the excited, it's one half. If in ground, minus. So it's like inversion difference between populations. So it is S sub Z or W in, in this definition. Okay. So, so if, if, we, if you care only about excitations, ground or excited, we need only S Z. But if it is coherent experiment with pulses, one also needs magnetization in X and Y. So they are composed only of all of those. And uh, they are called. Uh, this x is called in, in this notation is called u, and this uh, sub y is v. Okay. So if you, if you add together all diagonal elements, one two plus one to one, and typically one divided by two, it will be this x. If it will be uh, row yeah. one two minus uh, row two one divided by two i, it will be s y. So those elements can be uh, imaginary, but if you if you do these things, then you will get uh, comp comp uh, compensated. So. I'm not sure if I'm given immediate logic, but the wave function, if not, allows to find density matrix, which we can write either in this list or better matrices written as a matrix. And if you know the density matrix, you can find this projection of spin, pseudo spin, which gives magnetization, which is observable. It changes over time. So let's uh, look over the 
One question, please. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think I have this, some of this in the front of this. So, I actually yeah. bought all of the recommended texts. Mm -hmm. So, is there any section in those that you would recommend for reading about this? Yes. Uh, which book and which section? This book is uh, superior to all of them. It has uh, everything. I will. If you if you are not super busy after the class, we can walk to the uh, office and uh, quickly navigate you to the right page, or I can send you an email later. But if um, like it's it's safer just to go and look on the book together. All right. So I'm, it, it, it I'm not busy. Yep. Uh, it's uh, the first book out of these four is uh, yeah, adequate for third year undergraduate and even simpler. So every of us in, in the class can read it within like five hours or whatever by spending five minutes after each lecture or before each lecture. But it is like a little childish. The last one has everything, but it is designed for upper scale graduate class, so it, there, you would expect yourself to be to find time to read everything. It's more like looking back into the uh, content for key keyword content and then you find spin, uh, block, sphere, and then it will get you to the right page. Okay. And uh, it looks a little heavy in notations, but it's written uh, without any intellectual jumps. If you slowly read it, one understands everything. So it's uh, just a little long, but uh, the, the best book of the record theory. So you, you are browsing on the surface of book theory. If you apply light, you are going go this direction. If you let it fly, evolving, you go this direction. Uh, the code uh, here, the blue line is row 1 1. The red line is row 2 2. Purple and orange are 1 2 and 2 1, or whatever real part. Why are there are multiple lines? Briefly, because of the ensemble. For we are going a little bit away from. Well, basically, if you know how to propagate wave function, you can propagate density matrix. But there is a in this code there is a way of di di direct propagation of uh, uh, of the. Uh, Density matrix with so called Louisville uh, operator. So put here row uh, 1 1 at time 0, row 2 2 at time 0, and so forth. So let's navigate to this place. In the so we set up Louisville super operator, and at each time step, the Propagation, our um, motion forward in time from past to the future by time interval d tau is by exponential matrix of uh, going from this four four numbers of row old to four numbers of row new with this real operator. So it's uh, same as so uh, this is the dt is uh, okay. same as evolution operator but for density matrix. But if you look into, into here, there will be offset. Offset is how far the frequency of your uh, pulse is differs from E2 minus E1. So it's a If this uh, frequency and <laughs> energy and transition are in absolute resonance, then it will be zero. But if we have an ensemble of many samples, 
this offset will be randomly distributed. Some of these frequencies will be a little bigger, some of them a little, a little smaller. Why? Hmm. Uh, if you have different molecules with uh, like same stoichiometry, same absolutely same like nucleus, but they are just in different position in different space. They experience slightly different environment because other molecules around come in different configurations. Maybe higher temperature, maybe different electrostatic angle, and all these factors together uh, bring uns bring a little. Uh, there is a word disorder. So we take 40, 40 is just because uh, either myself or computer is lazy and you, do, you don't want to overspend time. 40 is a equal infinity on this scale. So we, we take um, 40 levels of offset, a little bit of negative, a little bit of positive, and run this evolution for density metrics for each of them, and then add together, like if you have uh, Ensemble ensemble equals one. Row one one from ensemble equals two. Ensemble equals n capital number. Divide by n capital, then it will be statistically average value of uh, of row one one. So. If, especially if you will deal with off-diagonal elements, this offset makes the propagation along equatorial line quicker or slower, or maybe in the opposite direction. Uh, yeah, um, this and is like if we create system in this superposition, then part of them will go quicker, part slower, part maybe in the opposite direction, and if we let them go and then add together, you can consider it as, as like vector 1, vector 2 going from center to here. And if these vectors will be equally distributed on the equatorial, then arithmetic uh, expectation value will bring us to the center, which means no magnetization. So originally, in an ensemble, you create a system with strong magnetization. All spins are, all magnetization is going in the same way, and they interfere constructively. But due to ensemble properties, they start to this free evolution, and they come into different directions. And then, after vector summation, there will be destructive interference, and overall magnetization is zero. And this is called free induction decay. If we look onto uh, this line, it is projection is like uh, sx squared plus sy squared, which means lengths of the block uh, vector as function of time. If magnetization is big, this one is big. If it comes to zero, it disappears. So originally it, it is large, and it is uh, this one is a contribution from this polar thing, but then polar thing. So basically, like the higher temperature. This times dash dash line gives this S X plus uh, S Y. As soon as they come to destructive interference, it disappears, which means spontaneous disappearance of magnetization. And if you just describe this one, run and give illustration, it will be sufficient. If you have curiosity, second pulse may make them to run in the opposite direction, and after some time they come into the constructive interference, and it will be a spin echo, photon echo. And interesting that time here and there is the same. Enough? I think so. Let, let's let's talk briefly. Okay.
spring I'm planning to do research on. Oh, in the spring I'm planning to do research on some uh, frustrated Lewis pairs. Oh, you, you Do- doctor. No, at MSU. Oh, different professor, not here. Oh. So uh, yeah. this will be helpful, I imagine, yeah, for sure. Maybe it's related fields. For sure, it's going to be a really good one for you. Yeah. So you basically just modify the, the scale. So do you know the deadline of turning into the final slides or something like that? No. I, I imagine it's going to be after this kid. Like this, uh, mid December. Like early yeah, really December. What is that? I imagine early December. Early December. Since this is not going to take the place of like a final test, right? I don't know. Since like we haven't had any exams. Honestly, I have no idea. Um, so I heard you say wow when I mentioned that I bought all of the recommended texts. Right? What was that? I heard like, when I mentioned to Dr. Killen that I bought the recommended texts, I heard you say wow. Yeah. Nobody does that. Right? Well, this is going to be like more than 500 bucks, right? I think it was 700 total. Fuck, are you going to resell it or are you going to keep it? I'm going to keep it. Well, are you going to go grass school? Or? I would like to. Ah, did you apply? I, I went to the, the grad school meeting that they had here and I'm going to be speaking with a, a person who's giving a speech about their research at grad school at my university on this Friday. So That's two that I've investigated so far. So, MDSU and MSU? Well, MSU doesn't have a chemistry program, oh. but it's, um, let's, 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 let's it's some sort of relationship between wherever they are in MSU. Sure. So, yeah. That sounds good. Okay. Oh, hi. You poured a lot of money in there. Yeah. You must be rich. No, but my brother is. Yeah. He is an electrical engineer. Yeah. He works for Digikey Electronics. Uh, yeah. It's uh, like the world's fifth largest electronics parts supplier. In Fargo. They're not in Fargo, they're actually in Thief River Falls, about an hour away. So, yeah. It's like, hey, I have books from my classes. Okay, how many? Here you go. Fuck, really? Yeah. Like I, I tried to tell him like your brother graduated from, from he graduated from NDSU. Damn. So. Wow, man. Got a good brother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got I have got a uh, a five. Well, let's see. I've got a box about this big uh-huh. filled with textbooks and 
a shelf about this big filled with textbooks and books just piled around my room at my parents' house. It's just like... Thank you. 
After lecture, can we chat briefly? I just want to, uh, if you are really want to learn more, where you are. Oh, uh, okay. Just, just, just briefly, like yep. two, three minutes. Okay.
Thank you.
So the first thing is the code I have. Um, I, just send, I send you two codes. Yes. One, one that works uh, right away, and another that needs to be run three times before it generates something. Oh, really? So the 92, should that work right away? If it doesn't, it does. I'll, I'll take care. It does not. <laughs> I tried it a few times, and um, it it did give me the graphs, but it never gave me the spinning um, bit, which I just ran it, so it's waiting right now. Oh, okay. So I'll show you what it pops up with. So well, uh, it does it work. Let's read things. Okay. Just com complaining uh, for video format. If uh, you don't care about video, one can disable uh, the everything related to writing video, and, and it, it will work fine. Oh, really? Yes. So I don't need to see the direction. Does this sh will this tell me the direction it's spinning? Yes. 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 But uh, making video is the, to some sense, uh, last part. Um, instead of one pin node, there are two pin nodes, okay. and same for X node. Instead of one x, there are two x and y, two dimensional. And 
Um, when, when, what's the case that there would be one X? Well, you cannot have. Hmm. I have very clear so it just takes me to uh, express verbally. The project that Amelia is doing mm -hmm. in the class material today uses one dimension for circular motion because we, we have angle. Mm. Here we are not doing this uh, smart thing. In some sense, it, well, it, it, it's more basic, so it uses literally position x, position in y without going to this uh, polar coordinates. Mm. So in this version of code, there is n no way to use uh, one uh, dimension because it's like plane is two dimensional. Okay, time is progressing, mm -hmm. and something is, is going on. By changing parameters, it will it move. And uh, so you're at least convinced that this version of code runs after giving it a jump start. Somewhat, yes. Okay. Uh, Doesn't seem to be moving, but it it's, it's, it's intentionally made uh, to move slower. See, something is changing here. Dispersion, this is not, not critical right now. So uh, we set up wave packet in X and Y, and then uh, uh, there will be. Yes. So actual wave packet is product because we have two dimensions, and mm. X and Y, we are multiplying it. Okay. And then this uh, product will have its will be matrix instead of vector. Okay. I, I have clues that I just make in poses to uh, verbalize. Matrices are difficult to propagate by linear differential equations. Just as the way to record data, it is more comfortable and convenient to convert a matrix into a vector okay. with the uh, like same elements instead of uh, writing it uh, instead of writing book line by line put it like all big row hmm. possible yeah it's a little silly but so we set up index uh, like if if this i and j run over all elements in uh, in this X dimension and Y dimension, mm -hmm. then we can set up an index as uh, one element plus second multiplied by the size. Uh, so the, this big index will come over, like if this runs over 100, another runs over 100, then big, big index will run over 10,000. Okay. And then uh, we from this product, which has two indices, we set up big psi of big index as a like, vector of whatever, 2,000, uh, 10,000 elements. Okay. <coughs> so this is m main idea. The rest will be following this thing. We will go into this super vector <laughs> and return from this vec super vector in two dimensions for visualization. Okay. Enough? No, you can absorb more. So, um, as it was set up in our course through the like, month, in order, to get, in order to propagate wave function forward in time, we need panel to an operator evolution operator. So we need operators. If a function is one dimensional, is a matrix, is a vector, then operator is a matrix. But if a function is a matrix, what will be the operator? 
an object with four indices, mm -hmm. which is it, it is okay, but not very comfortable. But you already have an elegant way of converting matrix with two dimension with two indices into a super matrix super vector with one big index. So then our new operator would be a matrix for that. Yes, uh, operators are is the same procedure. We can. Or convert operators from four indices to two indices mm -hmm. of the same nature of big, big index. Okay. When we were playing with um, wave function, we had two regular indices and one super index. When we deal with matrices, we have four regular indices and two super indices. Mm. So the cycle goes, there are four, four uh, cycles, cycles inside of each other. And then we have two super indi su big indices, right? So this is the um, four dimensional operator? Yes, we didn't write it down before we will uh, define it define it here. So probably this is the main part it's already written. Many many <laughs> it's for for another scientific work to, to learn, mm. uh, but I, it is the core of the, of the whole code. Do you have something to note? Okay. <laughs> Here you I have my backpack over there. Yeah, but it will be a couple of lines, but it may help. Wait. we have Hamiltonian that you act on degree of freedom x, Hamiltonian that acts on degree of freedom y. Okay. And there you have uh, I1 J1 I2 J2. We need to combine into super Hamiltonian that is uh, I1 I2 J1 J2 What how do we combine? Can we multiply them? Probably not. No. Maybe. <laughs> so um I'm not going to offer rigorous proof, but I I'll, I'll tell think that I confident is correct. Okay. So the we function uh, this depends on j1 by acting of the i1 j1 and putting summation over j1 will be converted into a function i1 mm. right so this uh, this indices got queued. This yep. one remains and promotes here. Okay. 
but if our wave function is uh, g1 and g2 if our big wave function what happens to the second factor of wave function if we act with only this part of Hamiltonian? Does it change the second one? No. So acting with the first part of uh, Hamiltonian on the combined wave function can be uh, written as H I1 G J1 times delta I2 J2, which means it will um, develop no changes for the second factor. Okay? And if we need to um, act by the this part of Hamiltonian, which will affect the second part, it will be the same construction. For the first two indices, it will be delta function I1 J1 times Hamiltonian for y mm -hmm. for i2 g2 and this is our super Hamiltonian got it the rest are technical details okay I don't fully understand but I get the concept okay. and then uh, right now we went forward from uh, many indices to few indices yep. And all calculations and propagations with evolution operator are done in this. Uh, so this will be big index, like big I. This will be like big, big G. This, right? Yes, right? Yes. That would be it. That would be right. And uh, wait, later on there will be pro pro propagation. There will be loop in the same way. Uh, yeah, loop. Propagation and after or inside the loop. We will be putting like e to the power i as big Hamiltonian delta t h bar on the big wave function, right? Okay. To go get it from t to t plus delta t. But as soon as we make this time step, this is will be with one big index. We need to return uh, to wave functions uh, with um, these two indices just to be able to plot. Okay. And uh, there will be a procedure to return back to more... So you get into this larger um, Hamiltonian and then once you get this you kind of go backwards? Yes. Okay. And then it is plotted, and there are some observables. So they, they, those are um, right now probably there is no time, but one can describe things in, in the same terms. Okay. And, uh, if uh, you just process this idea and then play this code, so I think it is done. Yes. And it should generate uh, the movie. If you look. Let's, let's, well, uh, one needs to open it, yes, there. MP4. Do not worry, I, ca I have a suggestion what to do. Let's do it cooperatively. I know part of the game and you will help with the, r the rest. So let's go to... Uh, and if you sign up and try to upload these files, you already have the account for previous assignments, right? So please try to log in and uh, upload these files and YouTube will just convert uh, it into uh, something more readable.
Hmm. Children's part. Uh, wait, 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 wait. When we required faith. I think that's why uh, in the code earlier on it said that the if you go up more um no video frames were written to this file. The file may be invalid. Okay, let's see what what is going on. Two seven eight two thirteen. There is no video writer in here. Should we do uh Sometimes these tricks help. So it works on Mac, but doesn't work on PC. Interesting. There is there is no rush. We, uh, through the um, Thanksgiving weekend, we will we will get through it. And thank you for being brave. Uh, I guarantee you that there will be success. Okay. And but uh, before, well, I'm solving. You just process, uh, think about it, and uh, m meditate and uh, formulate how to what can be done, what can be changed, and uh, let's chat and then do a couple of runs. Okay. So um, what area of the code would I look to to find like things I could manipulate? Oh, just initial values for P, uh, P not X not. So here. P not uh, X, yes, yes. Just these few things. Okay. And the um, end, <laughs> ma magne end magnetic field, just five parameters, not, nothing else. If you have steam to do more, we can discuss it, but originally it, it will be more than sufficient. Okay, where is the magnetic field? This? Yes. And then these four. P, these. P, 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 P not X, P not Y, X not Y not. Okay. Got it. And this one, leave alone? or? Yeah, this doesn't matter. That's used to help define these, yes. I'm guessing. Okay. Got it. I, um, I would try maybe they, they they will decline to go into the opposite direction, but you can uh, do counterface like uh, p not x equals like minus ten p not y equals plus ten. Mm. It will be this point on the, on the face space. And uh, that would be opposite symbols. Yeah. And, and then, yeah, P not X equals plus 10. P 
continued way will be will be minus ten. Yes. And, and then it will be like. <laughs> right now, it is designed to have only one wave packet. Okay. But then we can probably duplicate and have two wave packets simultaneously. To to practice. Like mm -hmm. If you manipulate the code somehow. Yes. Okay. But but that's uh, <laughs> not working. Right, right, right. Yeah, right now I think you you have more than enough to to practice and to enjoy your curiosity. Okay. Good. Sure. I can deal with that. Yep. Thank you. Thank you.